Hey yo, I don't know about you guys, but Kuka kinda looking down bad like... Uh, uh, uh. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're gonna be talking about the new pre-gala that is coming up, the pre-fez for the East Asian treat. A very, very interesting one. Like, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I go pretty down bad for the kimonos, for the kitsune masks, for all of these quite traditional like Edo period designs. And so without further ado, let's jump right into the content. So first of all, we have the Princess Gala double three star draw rates banner. As you can see on the screen, it is going to be featuring Oedo Kuka as well as Christina. Now, let me make something very, very, very clear about this banner. And so my dudes, we are over here. As you can see, 2022 April. And what you will see is that we have a 5% rate of getting any three star. Within that 5%, we have a 0.7% rate of getting Oedo Kuka. What that really means is that there is no true rate up. Now, as for Christina's involvement, because she is being shown kind of like as a banner character, she is like kind of on rate up where she is on 0.35%. And then the rest of the three star characters are going to be sharing that 3.95% of which Muimi is one of them. And so what that means is that you'll have the same chance of getting Makoto or Jun or Muimi. All right, and so that out of the way, let's come back over here and have a look at Oero Kuka. Uh, honestly, she kind of cute. So why don't we go ahead and have a look at the Oero Kuka kit, Oero Kuka skills and see where exactly she places. So I'm gonna scroll in a little bit so we can have a good look at her cute face. Uh, let's go over to skills and have a look at her union burst, ecstasy, climax, dance. So we with her UBO, she is going to be able to recover HP to self by a massive amount. Typically speaking, this is going to be like a full heal. And on top of that, she is also going to give a moderate increase to magic defense and physical defense for allies in range. However, as good as this sounds, because it kind of sounds like, you know, the storm meta is coming back, it's not. Well, it's not going to come back with Oedo Kuka because if you look down here, 50 range. That is, um, that is like almost nothing. I don't know about you guys, but like 50 range, like at most, it will cover some of the frontal units. And so moving on, we have skill one. Everyone excite me with apply a moderate magic attack buff to all allies. Now, this is probably a good time to mention that Oedo Kuka's normal attacks are actually magic attacks. Because if you think back, Kuka, Jun, Miyako, Pekarin, all of the tanks that we currently have in the game, they're all dealing physical damage. Oedo Kuka will be dealing magical damage. And the reason that I mention that is because because of this skill, apply a moderate magic attack buff to all allies. It is exactly what it sounds like. She is certainly going to be juicing up those magical units. So in the scenario that you need a tank and you are running some magical units, like Oedo Kuka might be your gal. And so at our current level cap at about 130, we're probably gonna be looking at about 800 magic attack for this buff. It's certainly not game breaking, but it's also certainly quite good considering this is a tank that is giving this massive buff. And remember how I said that she does normal attacks as magic attacks? This certainly helps that. Okay, moving on to skill two, inflicts small magic damage to the frontmost enemy and inflicts a small magic defense down to the target. Honestly, that's that's just pretty good. It's quite solid. Like if you have a look at this multiplier, 0.6 is quite significant. Assuming your Oero Cooker is at level 130 for scalings against 0.6, you're gonna be doing 78 defense down for magic defense. Like, I don't know about you guys, but that sounds pretty freaking good considering that's probably more magic defense down than a lot of other characters. And the really great part about this is that she is a tank. And so what this means is that if you need an offensive tank, for your magical units, then you should go with Oedo Kuka. Very, very similar to how if you need an offensive tank for your physical units, you will take Jun because Jun has physical defense down. And so moving on, we have the EX skill with increase to magic defense. I think that's quite straightforward. Magic defense for Kuka. And then looking at her loop pattern, it's not looking too hot, but it's not looking too bad either. Obviously, because skill one and skill two are both quite significant buffs, it would be overly cracked if we allowed it to rotate more than that. All right, and so what I just described, I think was probably the best use in terms of like the practicality, the comparison that I drew between Oeto Kuka as well as Jun, because you don't really find Jun in arena anymore, right? Unless the enemy team is like not exactly ultra complex. What I mean by that is that if you're fighting not very complex targets, so I'm talking like clan battle, I'm talking potentially story mode and some stages for Luna Tower, then Kuka is certainly your gal. Of course, when you are using 
using your magical units. However, what we do have to remember for Kuka is that she is technically like losing her taunt if you're comparing her to her own base variants. And so no, she is not going to catch the Tamakis. She is not going to catch the Maho or the Yuki blinds. She is unfortunately not going to be protecting any of our units anymore because again, she is kind of like just tanking and buffing. And so with that, hopefully you'll realize that she might have some utility in the clan battle. She could be quite annoying on the defense side for arenas and she certainly could find some use in your Luna Tower as well as your story. And all of that brings us back to the point of, well, should you then roll for this bad girl? I think the most obvious answer is that, well, this is a Princess Gala banner. If you're missing Christina, if you're missing Mimi, then go ahead and try. But otherwise, the probably most crucial piece of information that I've left out is that this Oedo Kuka, she is not a Princess Gala character and she is not limited either she is actually permanent. And that can be confirmed by this guy down here. While this isn't the last opportunity you have to obtain Oedo Kuka. All right, and so that's our evaluation for Oedo Kuka. Pretty good. So we have the Princess Gala for about seven days, and then we have the Oedo Kuka banner herself for another six. And so moving on, we have the special login bonus, the Landosso Cup second edition. This this guy is actually pretty freaking funny. Like, I don't know about you guys, but it's always a joy to watch them kind of just like get cucked or like fall over stuff or literally just like zoom to the end of the freaking finish line. And so this guy is going to last for 10 days from 2nd of April up to 12th of April. And remember that we can get anywhere from 250 jewels all the way up to 500 jewels, depending on how you place. It's free jewel estate. <laughs> I think Crunchyroll are getting a little, they're getting a little sneaky. All right, moving on. Next, we have Shogun Chronicles: The White Wing Samurai. This is, uh, this is actually a really interesting event because I see the Oninon and I, man, I freaking want that so bad. But my boys, my boys, hold strong. She is also a permanent character. All right, and so this is our new event, our upcoming event, and TLDR. It's all gonna be the same, same. We have normal, hard, very hard modes as well as a special difficulty boss. And then moving down, we have the event quest player exp times 1.5 so i do need to kind of point something out and it's that if you guys didn't realize for our rerun for the hot snake event right now there is actually no event quest player exp times 1.5 so if you guys are a newer player this event is certainly worth to dump a lot of stamina into and just so you can actually juice up your player exp all right and so moving forward we have the kuka as well as the monica shards now this is quite significant because we are getting both monica and kuka UEs for the upcoming batch. And so if you guys can exercise some patience, we can get the Monica shards, we can get the Kuka shards and therefore save some arena, P arena, dungeon coins, whatever they use. All right, otherwise that's a pretty good event. I think Monica shards, I think Kuka shards, they're both very, very important. Both their UEs are quite cracked out. Obviously Monica in particular, but with that said, let's move on to the new and returning furniture available. Oh God, yes. So in regards to this one, what I do want to mention is that we have some limited time furnitures. So if you guys are collectors, don't forget to pick those up. But otherwise, I believe we've seen this set before. It's uh, it's quite a nice set actually. But okay, moving on to, oh, oh, Sanctum Survey drops times two. Six days of 2X on Sanctum Survey. Oh my God, oh my heart, yes, baby. Like, I don't know about you guys, but even now I'm still so down bad on these heart shards, man. And so if you guys are as well, I would say do consider refreshing at least like the second level. But on the other hand, if you guys don't really like care about meta and stuff, don't worry about it. Just save up your rolls and go roll for the Summer Saren because we all down bad for her, you know what I'm saying? All right, and so moving forward, we have normal quest times two. Oh yeah, oh my God. <laughs> Why am I just always down bad, man? And that is going to finish off our patch notes. Uh, it's, it's quite a good one. I, I do like this one. All right, honestly, like... <sighs> I'm, I'm itchy. I am so itchy, my guys. I have skipped so many freaking banners. I've skipped Greya, I've skipped Anne, I've skipped Kasumi. And I really want to freaking roll, especially because this is a pre-gala banner. I also should not because Oedo Kuka, O Ninon, they're all permanent units. And just, just looking at this guy over here, for you guys who are the ReZero fans, there is the collab coming up almost right after that event, actually. And then right after ReZero, we do have the summer units in which it's going to be like, bam, another one, another one, another one, another one. And then like Nenika, and then we've got the Halloween Kyoka. Halloween Mimi, Luna, Kaya, oh my god, Christmas, Christina, blah, 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 oh my lord. And if you guys aren't sure in terms of priority for this year, so I just like refer to this year as year two, 
I have actually made a video on the pool priority in terms of if you want to be meta chasing. However, if you guys just love your ReZero girls, just, just go for it, my guys. And I guess I was rambling because I'm still trying to convince myself whether I do want to roll or I don't want to roll for Oedo Kuka. All right, I guess I'll keep thinking on it. But like with that said, that is going to bring us to the end of the video. And so I do want to leave you guys with the secret question. Well, I, I don't know if I am rolling for Oedo Kuka, but do you guys know if you are? Let me know if you guys are going to be rolling for this fine specimen and down in the comments below. And if you would leave a comment i would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video so thank you guys so much if you did like this video please consider a like a subscribe or like turning the notification bell but otherwise my guys as kuka once said all good things must come to an end so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video Bye bye